Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In this video, I am going to discuss section C of class 10 board examination 2019 science paper. So question number 6 is, define an ecosystem, draw a block diagram to show the flow of energy in an ecosystem. So a system in which there is an interdependence among abiotic and biotic components in a given habitat is called an ecosystem. Now we need to draw the diagram given in our NCRT book chapter number 15 where it shows the flow of energy from sun to top carnivores. Question number 7. List three advantages of exploiting resources with short term aims. So the first advantage is that today's generation needs would be fulfilled if we use or exploit resources with uh, short term aims. Second, development, rapid development will take place. Third, improvement in the lifestyle of people will take place of today's generation. Then part two, using a long term perspective in managing our natural resources. So advantages of this are sustainable development will take place. Then second, equitable distribution among all the people will take place. Not just a handful of people, handful of rich people would be able to use these resources. Then third, environmental problems will not occur. Like global warming, pollution will not occur. Question number 8. What is a rainbow? Draw a well label diagram to show the formation of the rainbow. So, the dispersion of light by raindrops to create a spectrum of colors in the sky is called a rainbow. It happens because of the reflection and refraction of light by raindrops. Then we need to draw this diagram. Wait. To draw this diagram, this one. And we need to label it. Next question. Nervous and hormonal system together perform the function of control and coordination in human beings. Justify the statement with the help of an example. You can give any example. I have given adrenaline hormone example that uh, how nervous system sends signals to the hormone uh, hormone sites and then they release the hormones and this is how they work together. Then question number 10. There is a sequence of events which occur when a bright light is focused on our eyes. So in this, you need to give the all the events when the bright light is focused in your eyes. So first it enters from cornea, then it goes uh, to pupil and you need to explain it till the optic nerve sends a signal to the brain. And in this you need to mention cones cone cells in retina because they are sensitive to bright light. Then question number 11. What is photosynthesis? Explain its mechanism. So the process by which all green plants obtain their food using CO2, water and sunlight in the presence of chlorophyll. And then you can give the statement, uh, give the equation. And then you need to explain the mechanism by giving the steps given in the NCRT. Question number 12. List two differences between acquired traits and inherited traits by given example of each. So the difference between acquired traits and inherited traits is first the definition. And second that acquired traits are not copied into DNA and that's why they don't go into the offsprings from the parents. And inherited inherited traits are not copied, are copied in the DNA and go from Parents to offspring. And then you can give example of each. Question number 13. 2 gram of silver chloride is taken in a china dish and the china dish is placed in sunlight for some time. What will be your observation in this case? So the observation will be that the color of silver chloride will change to gray. So the color change will be from white to gray as silver chloride is white in color and silver is gray in color. Then there is a chemical, uh, chemical reaction involved. So the chemical reaction involved will be AgCl uh, in the presence of sunlight decomposes into Ag plus Cl2 and then we need to balance it. Then
then identify the type of chemical reaction this is the type of chemical reaction is photolytic decomposition reaction or photo decomposition reaction next question is question number 14 Based on the group valency of elements, write the molecular formula of the following element giving the specification for each. Oxide of the first group elements. C. Let's take any of the first group elements. Let me take Na. That is sodium. It has valency 1 and oxygen. It has valency 2. So, the formula will be Na2O. Na2O. So, the oxide of first group elements. So, we need to give the molecular formula of it. So, molecular formula will be R2O. This is any of the elements. Then, the light of the uh, elements of the first group uh, of the group 13. So, group 13 has valency 3. R valency 3. And the light halogen. Halogen C. Cl is also an halogen. Now, so we'll just uh, assume it Cl and it has valency 1. So 1 R H3. This will be the formula. Now, if you considered halogen halide for hydrogen instead of halogen, then also your formula will be correct because hydrogen also has valency 1 then third compound formed when an element A of group 2 combines with element B of group 17 so element A of group 2 group 2 has valency 2 and B B is of 17 group so 17th group has valency 1 because it has 7 electrons in its outermost shell so, the formula will be AB2. Question number 15. Explain the following. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound which does not conduct electricity in solid state whereas it does conduct electricity in molten state as well as in aqueous state. So, the answer for this would be as sodium chloride is an ionic compound, it does not have ions, free ions in the solid state as the ions in the ionic compound have a strong electrostatic force of attraction between them and that's why they do not conduct electricity but in molten state and echo state ions associate and they connect electricity then b the activity of aluminium decreases if it is dipped in HNO3 that is nitric acid so the answer for this will be that nitric acid is a strong oxidizing agent which oxidizes uh, aluminium and further develop its uh, uh, its uh, oxide layer which prevents the aluminium to react further and that's why the reactivity of aluminium decreases then C metals like calcium and magnesium are never found in their free state in nature they are never found in their free state of nature as they both are reactive and they react easily with uh, the elements and form compounds and that's why they are not present in free state in nature so this was section c by me if you liked it then please subscribe to my channel like this video and comment down below thank you